Dear participants, you have an ability to ask questions through QR code. You can scan the code to get the access to Telegram bot. The speakers will select the most interesting questions and answer them after their presentation. In 2027, the market of communication through satellites will be more than $19 billion. How fast we will take criminals to go into space? This is what we will discuss during the Star Wars the Hidden Manners presentation by Dmitry Avchinnikov, chief expert at complex cybersecurity systems from Gaz Inform Service. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today I would like to tell you about cybersecurity and how it fought gravity and went into space. Each story has the beginning, and our beginning was on the 4th of October 1957 when the first satellite went into space. Three years later, the first communication satellite was launched, and in 1603, the first commercial satellite was launched, which was placed on a geosynchronous orbit. Since 1957 to 2024, the number of satellites increased. You can see it here on the screen the number of active satellites per year in thousands and tens of thousands. Usually it was a linear progression, but at the end of 2010s, new countries joined the space race, like India and China. Besides that, commercial launches, which previously were unthought of, now are available thanks to new technologies. Common companies started to launch their own satellites and rockets into the space. In 2022, more than 100 satellites were launched into space. Some of them were from the government, like 34 were between the government and commerce, but Starlink launched more than 3,000 satellites since its deception. In 2011, we have 800 or 957 satellites. In 2022, more than 5,000, and in 2023, almost 7,000. The statistics for 2023 should have been published in June 2024, so that's why we are looking at the 2023. 75% of all satellites are commercial satellites. The satellites that provide money and benefits and they work for our the great good, let's say. Why companies decided to launch satellites into space and why they were able to make it commercially viable? First and foremost, this is thanks to the space technology and space industry developments. In the 1960s, only 50% of launches were successful, but by 2024, almost 100% of launches are successful. We also have improved robustness and power of engines that can put commercial payload onto satellites, not just spy satellites, but the real satellites that help economy and common people. Just to understand, I think a good example would be a space shuttle. In the beginning of 1980s, the cost of a single, of a single kilogram of payload was $85,000, but by the end of Space Shuttle, the price decreased to $25,000, $26,000, basically three or even four times. Soyuz was one of the cheapest way to put payload onto the orbit, and it was $4,600. The rocket was so successful that it was only overtaken by Falcon 9, which even has lower costs, and by 2040, the cost of payload, one, one kilogram of payload, would be even 
closer to $1,000 per kilogram. Why do satellites matter for economy? If we consider what happened in the stand of hall, we will see a lot of critical industries which we have in our lives. Well, maybe not always directly, but we can feel their presence. So how do we feel satellites' presence? How do they affect our lives? Well, first of all, this is communication. Thanks to satellites, we can have economic and geographic communication between different points, and we don't have to use any cables, any stations, and we can send expeditions to work with some to get resources and to look for oil, maybe. And obviously, this is broadcasting, TV, Internet, all that is available through satellites. Next is weather. Obviously, you have a smartphone in your pocket. In the morning, after a cup of coffee, you go and check Gismetio weather, for example. All that is available because of satellites that can look for potential weather changes, and it provides the information about the weather. Obviously, it's about the state, state companies, and they allow to decrease potential natural catastrophes, and we just use, we just buy standards, and we also use these capabilities. We also use navigators, but obviously maritime trade is the main user, the main consumer of navigation. Basically, everything that surrounded us was produced, manufactured, and delivered through maritime trade. And finally, research and mapping. Mapping can be done very precisely through the help of satellites. If we take consider, consider what happens in the city, they can track cars, buses, and this can be used in smart cities. This will also divert traffic flows and would help avoid traffic jams. So satellites affect our lives in many ways. And now let's see the numbers. The whole space industry takes up $384 billion. This is the 2022 report. And 73% for satellites, $281 billion. And about $16 billion are spent to produce and manufacture satellites, and $7 billion are spent to launch this payload. So, what can we say about the potential forecast for the next 10 years? It is assumed that the number of satellites will increase at least twofold compared to what we have now. There will be more low orbit satellites and satellites at the geosynchronous orbit. The reason is that low orbit satellites are the cheapest way to put payload on the orbit, and geosynchronous or geostationary orbit are provide good functionality. We also we have navigation satellites, communication satellites, and increase basically twofold. We also have research satellites, obviously not too many new research satellites will be with more commercial use. Now, numbers. Numbers don't lie. Each year, the market will have 8.1% of increase. The market of smaller satellites will be even two times faster, about 17%. Just for you to understand if it's a lot or not. On average, it's considered that the economy will grow with 2.4 through 3.2%. So this kind of growth, 8% or even 17% is very and very good. And it demonstrates that satellites is something that economy is interested in. And what economy is caring about? Obviously, this is something interesting for potential criminals and malicious users. So Star Wars is what I would like to talk to you about. How do we imagine this situation? I think many people imagine this kind of science fiction and movies and comics books, because our mindset, our mind is formed by what we see on the screen, and probably this is what you imagine. But in reality, it's very different. 
very, very different. Another generation probably can remember a strategic defensive initiative, Star Wars by Reagan. It was impossible in the 1980s. It was very costly and basically impossible to implement. And it's really hard to do now. But anti-satellite weapons, some kind of MiG-21 fighter with a special missile, this is very, very real and it was tested. Still, we are a little bit perplexed, a little bit confused with our ideas with what they see on the screen. Previously, it was considered that only highly technological country can fight satellites. The country that can have fully fledged, fully developed space industry, and only they can have satellite killers. But during the last 10 years, we can see that you don't need to have an ability to launch rockets and have developed industry you can just hire hackers. The development of AI and ML, as well as exchange of data between people, allowed to have successful attacks on satellites. Now let's take a look at the incidents, what happened before. Maybe I'm just thinking up. Well, it actually was true. The first incident happened in 1997 with American-German satellite called Rosat. Some unknown hacker brute forced password and also used some social engineering, and they got access to the file server of NASA. The control from Rosat was through files. The hacker edited files, and in 1998, the satellite changed its orbit, moved towards sun was overheated and damaged beyond repair. Then it was off the orbit and destroyed in 2011. Another uh, incident publicly known. Happened in 1999, our group of manufacturers uh, captured control over the British Skynet uh, satellite and uh, asked for ransom uh, for the return of control over the satellite. Officially, uh, the information was denied. Landsat 7, 2007 and 2008, a loss of communication for more than 10 minutes, twice. Terra AM1, uh, the wrongdoers. I uh, caused a disruption uh, in in the operation of a satellite in 2008. And perhaps the biggest uh, case happened in 2022, uh, when unknown uh, wrongdoers attacked uh, via side satellite, which led to a uh, German company losing control uh, to uh, more than uh, to about 6,000 wind turbines. And how this attack touched uh, more than 20,000 users all over Europe. It was such a high profile. Uh, that uh, the European Parliament convened to discuss uh, impact. So, I've already uh, shared this information about attacks that they happened in real life. Let me now speak about satellites. Before uh, we discuss how they can be protected, let's at least understand uh, what's in there. So we have two parts, the terrestrial part and the space uh, part. Uh, it's uh, more or less clear uh, for you uh, what's happening on the other side, uh, there are uh, flight control centers and also uh, some additional centers uh, can be used uh, that uh, collect data exchanged with the satellite. And of course, uh, there are requirements to the satellite in the space. It should be resilient and uh, it should be light. Uh, and now that we're talking about commercial satellites rather than military, uh, so a lot of other uh, types of loads are being used in the satellite uh, to uh, maximize uh, the output. Uh, now, uh, regarding the terrestrial part, those people who have been here for more than ten, uh, more than an hour, know uh, how you know terrestrial assets are protected. So it's a classic way. One uh, can uh, say that it's a critical infrastructure uh, site, and then we protect it just as any critical infrastructure uh, site. We install a CM and uh, see what's happening. Uh, the situation of the satellite is a little bit different. 
Uh, as uh, a target for protection, it's quite interesting. Communications, uh, uh, satellites communication uh, among each other, uh, that improves their performance uh, when the satellites are at, d at different points above our planet. Uh, the most critical thing that happens to the satellite is that it's not on Earth, so we won't be able uh, to send a tech support engineer there to press a uh, button and hard reset the equipment. Uh, you know, uh, getting uh, men in space is not as easy uh, as sending an engineer to a server room. Second thing uh, is that communication with satellite is not happening over the wire in a protection format, but over a radio beam. And the third main point that makes uh, this uh, security target from others is the high cost of error. If we do something wrong, because on uh, average, the satellite uh, has a weight of 500 kilos. Uh, it costs about $2 million uh, to inject it at the ob object, and the price and the cost of equipment uh, can hardly be measured, because in many cases, it's just a unique uh, device. Uh, it's not a situation like you can come somewhere uh, and uh, ask a satellite to be sold to you off the shelf. No, it doesn't happen. So what kind of threats uh, can we encounter? Firstly, uh, let's uh, take away from the table those things that can't happen. Uh, you can't send uh, wrong data uh, to a tanker. So it should crash against the rocks uh, and cause an old spill. Uh, this kind of system I duplicated many times. Uh, there are living persons on uh, such uh, sites uh, that uh, keep an eye on what's happening. The second thing, uh, like we know uh, from Blockbuster, uh, when uh, a satellite is directed to Earth uh, and it attacks, physically attacks, no, uh, it'll burn while it travels uh, through the atmosphere. Uh, it can, uh, can call a global disruption in communication. No, uh, the networks are quite resilient. And the last thing that we're not going to discuss uh, is uh, about uh, the, you know, disrupting a secret military uh, satellite. But what does happen and what we need uh, to uh, think about protecting our satellites? Uh, firstly, uh, it's about inter information interception. Data is the most valuable thing in our digital times. So it wouldn't be good if somebody gets access to the data not intended for them. So for us, it's very important to provide the security of the information that uh, we are getting. Uh, next thing that we want to be protected from is uh, from uh, short-term uh, disruptions. As I said, uh, satellites can be used uh, to do remote sensing. They can be used uh, by Coast Guard or uh, by, uh, uh, let's say, uh, people protecting uh, the uh, country's borders, border control. Uh, so uh, satellites can be disrupted to gain a window of invisibility. And the next important thing uh, is uh, about uh, space garbage, so that satellites uh, can uh, crash into each other. Uh, it's not, we're not yet there, but even now, uh, companies launching satellites uh, are trying to align uh, the position of the satellites as they are being launched. But in the future, because the number of satellites is going to grow, the value uh, of space in orbit uh, will uh, be higher. So it will be uh, happy. Uh, because uh, uh, there are too many of them. So destruction of a satellite. I gave you an example with the Rosat satellite. It is quite possible and quite doable. And the last Thing that uh, can threaten us. Uh, it was the classic attacks that uh, have been considered in, from many angles here. DDoX attack, supply chain attacks, uh, virus infection, something uh, that 
Спутник, как и любая другая вещь, имеет свои стадия. большую Uh, minimize uh, the mass uh, of the satellite and its payload and maximize the functionality. So here, uh, it's very important. So, uh, that uh, they uh, should be good enough, uh, but perhaps uh, not uh, too long and experimental. Uh, we're not in a position to send like five, six, seven, nine satellites and understand what's going to work, what's not. Uh, we need uh, to be sure that everything now will uh, be operating properly from the first attempt. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, need uh, security uh, to be provided the inbuilt in the satellite component, otherwise add them. So here we're running into the following problem. If we come to the customer and see that there's something wrong, we can all, always uh, you know, install some uh, new uh, uh, tools, uh, add some new components. Uh, it's not uh, going to work uh, with the satellite. The maximum we can do is to update the uh, firmware, but if something goes wrong, we need uh, to be able to roll back to the previous one. So whatever uh, we uh, are going to uh, think about uh, while the satellite is still on Earth, it should be reliable enough for the lifetime. Как мы знаем, криптография, то есть передача, безопасная передача данных. Place to talk about cryptography. Uh, as we know, cryptography, that's uh, safe and secure transmission of data, is an important thing. So we need uh, to foresee uh, the capability uh, for uh, modernization, not only changing the keys, but also uh, to uh, improve uh, and strengthen uh, the algorithm. For instance, uh, we uh, first used algorithms that uh, have been compromised, uh, and now we need to use something uh, more hardened, and we need need to allow uh, for an ability to that. Next thing, uh, manufacturing. Had we been talking about the military satellite, I think many of you uh, would uh, you know, draw a picture uh, of you know, a snow-ridden tiger uh, with security guys, uh, with shepherd dogs. But uh, we're talking about uh, commercial satellites. Commercial satellites are building their own money. So perhaps uh, we are going to try and save. Uh, so we are going to be ordering parts uh, from those companies that can provide us, uh, provide them uh, to us uh, at a reasonable price. Uh, so we need uh, to make sure uh, that the supplies we're going to uh, use uh, should be protected from supply chain attacks, uh, so that uh, production should. Uh, уязвимый спутник, поэтому тут важно работать сообщая, чтобы у всех... And then uh, they, the company uh, becomes a victim of uh, a supply chain attack. Uh, then uh, it wouldn't be absolutely right. Uh, what else uh, should we pay attention at? Uh, uh, I was talking about, the, uh, about minimizing uh, the attack surface. Uh, the uh, less things there are in the satellite, uh, the smaller the attack surface. Uh, service automation is good, uh, but we have these questions about interaction between uh, 
определения, то есть детектирования атак. Satellite components and terrestrial services. It all has to be considered in mind. Detecting attacks, who attacked us, and how. I personally understand that CM uh, is long uh, obsolete. It goes back to the start of the tens. Uh, SOC uh, is also uh, not new, but uh, they still should uh, be present in the satellite because we need to be able to detect attacks. Detect attacks that may be directed against us. And the most important thing, fault tolerance. Unfortunately, uh, fixers are leaders in cartoons. So therefore, uh, we uh, need uh, to uh, provide for everything so that our satellite uh, could uh, restore uh, its uh, work capability of the orbit. So, we are almost uh, up, uh, but uh, bear with me. Uh, the satellite is produced in one place and the launch in another uh, place. Uh, the close the satellite uh, is to the equator, uh, the easier it is uh, to put it uh, in orbit. So uh, we need to make uh, sure that security uh, is in place throughout uh, the transportation route uh, from the production site to the launch site. And uh, again, uh, we need to make sure that everything is right and updated, because we won't be able to update any hardware in the space. Uh, okay, uh, mission uh, starts, uh, the launch is uh, countdown effected, and the launch is completed. Now that uh, our satellite is in orbit, and works fine, is working fine, it's uh, important uh, for us not to allow uh, any unauthorized uh, people uh, to uh, control system. It's important for us uh, that the satellite could uh, position itself properly so that it should be protected against uh, any uh, interference and so uh, that uh, it uh, should obey the commands. And uh, when its service time is over, uh, that it should be uh, safely uh, taken off the orbit. I haven't found uh, any Russian documentation, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I only found some Western documentation. I'm uh, sure uh, that uh, our military industrial complex uh, or space uh, companies have recommendations how to uh, launch uh, this uh, beautiful, uh, safe and sound satellite of the future. So I had to limit my... Uh, sets out uh, the security requirements uh, for uh, the uh, for space satellites. Unfortunately, uh, it's a good document, but don't have specific requirements. Uh, the NASA is also a good document, but also a basic document. And the last one uh, is from NASA, but uh, everything's fine about that, but it doesn't have nice pictures to insert in this uh, presentation. So, uh, and in conclusion, I'd like to say uh, that that we still have a long way to go. We need to protect our satellites. I'm hoping I've been able uh, to share that uh, satellites are important. Uh, we see the results of uh, their work every day. Uh, there's a long journey uh, lying ahead. Of us, I believe that uh, space uh, is an important part uh, of the future, uh, that humankind uh, has uh, it's the way uh, to energy, uh, to new planets, and it's just cool and exciting. Thank you very much. Now about Q&A. If you have any questions, you're welcome. Question number one, uh, what uh, if uh, some uh, undocumented functionality is added to the satellite, intentionally or unintentionally? So a lot of bad things can happen. So basically, this is the main should be the main focus of uh, the security people and uh, um, assembly people at the build phase. Uh, of late, uh, more and more uh, 
company is starting to deal with light and super light uh, injections at uh, uh, What do you think uh, about the prospects uh, for uh, malicious uh, satellite constellation to be? Yes. Uh, we had this program uh, to make satellites, watch satellites uh, from uh, fighter planes. Americans had a similar problem. So it's quite possible. Uh, but uh, the most uh, interesting satellites uh, are at a distance of 35,000 kilometers from the Earth. I'm talking about geostationary satellites. And uh, uh, low Earth uh, satellites uh, fly at the height of 180 uh, to about 1,000 kilometers. So uh, this kind of launches uh, should, are more likely to make just a tube that will go to that. Uh, the existing satellites. Uh, satellites are delivered by air, so uh, wrongdoers uh, can outdated set satellites over here, uh, so uh, wrongdoers uh, theoretically can access to that. How do you protect the firmware? Firstly, uh, we do cryptography, uh, change keys on a timely basis. And we think uh, about updating uh, information satellites uh, in a secure way. Of course, wrongdoers uh, can sit next uh, to the control center and try to get the data, uh, but this uh, depends. Design uh, the control procedures. So my time is over, and I would like to use uh, the remaining few seconds for thanking Positive Technologies for the invitation to uh, speak before you. And I think uh, they'd like it if uh, we give them a round of hands all together to thank them uh, for this great job doing this uh, this festival. Thank you. За 2023 год рынок технологий ИИ вырос. На тему применения Hello, I'm very happy uh, to be on the stage uh, on a Saturday night, uh, 20 past 7 p.m. I am happy to see you all here. I'm hoping that this presentation is going to be uh, of interest for you. I'm going to talk uh, about AI as it is used in attacks. Uh, we even had a separate uh, track uh, in this conference discussed. AI has been discussed in a lot of detail has been used in security. So I'd like to consider the other side of it, how uh, the uh, wrongdoers can use uh, AI in attacks about us and our organization. A few words about myself. It so happened that uh, I put on the same outfit today as uh, the one I'm wearing in this picture. So it's difficult to confuse me with anyone else. The AI in general and uh, the leap forward uh, that it uh, took in the past few years has uh, produced a strong impact on our life. Because uh, whenever we're talking about some ubiquitous digitization and automation, uh, all industries are trying to automate their processes, uh, adding new devices uh, at the edge. And this brings about a lot of uh, threats, uh, just like business uh, wrongdoers are trying to use AI uh, to achieve their goals for uh, or send uh, social engineering no, defects and everything else that I'm going to share with you today. And of course, I can't help uh, mentioning uh, that AI uh, has uh, been uh, used uh, quite actively uh, for information security. Uh, with whichever uh, product uh, sheet you take, uh, it will always have uh, something mentioned about AI been using that solution. Uh, yesterday, I talked about uh, drone socks, uh, where uh, the 
shock of the future is going, and it's clear that we don't have any future without because I'm head of research. Uh, we uh, research different things, but also we collect data on all the attacks carried out against organizations and private individuals. We collect statistics, and so we can identify top using uh, uh, so, uh, using uh, the uh, uh, viruses, uh, social engineering and uh, exploiting uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, everything else goes uh, next after that. Uh, now, talking about tactics and techniques, uh, we know it all, we love these things, uh, we're trying to map attacks against techniques and tactics, and when we're using uh, language models and AI, uh, colleagues have uh, certain things prepared for that, techniques and tactics related to the use of the AI in social engineering uh, in order to enter security tools, in order to help uh, write uh, malware, and in order uh, to uh, look uh, for uh, vulnerabilities and exploit them. Let's start with OSINT. My colleagues uh, were talking yesterday at this very stage uh, about how OSINT is used for cybersecurity, they were talking about cyber weather, uh, and also, uh, but OSINT, just like it says, a very good thing to be used in cybersecurity, it can be used uh, by... Uh, 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 to uh, you know, collect the big data and uh, mix them and match them, correlating them, deriving uh, valuable information from large volumes of data. So uh, OSINT uh, is used in exactly the same way by security people and malefactors. Of course, using AI, you can identify the attack service. So, uh, surface, and uh, there are special research uh, projects uh, aimed at it. As an example, there's a tool uh, that's intended for broad scale uh, tests of uh, network penetration. Now, about things born uh, for hacking, I think everybody, uh, when they think about uh, uh, AI in attacks. Everybody has heard about Worm GPT. Perhaps you also heard about uh, its new version, 3.0. You've heard about Fraud GPT. But I'd like to focus on a tool uh, called Dark Bird. Uh, it's a model uh, that's trained on dark web data, and uh, it can be used uh, to attack uh, sophisticated companies based on social engineering to uh, find vulnerabilities and exploit them. Uh, those who are not born uh, for hacking uh, can also do that. Uh, colleagues, in the discussion today, if AI uh, will be able to replace a uh, cyber uh, security uh, specialists. Uh, same thing uh, can be applied uh, conversely. So if if uh, we ask a model uh, to ask a if there are some protections there, but if you rephrase your request, it will be happy to help, and you'll be able to use the data uh, that the model uh, will uh, offer you for you malicious purposes. So, of course, uh, this brings about uh, quite uh, a low entry threshold to the, to the effective attacks. As uh, to malware development, a lot of legends are in place. Uh, so there are a lot of discussions where AI can be used for that. We try to operate with facts. So in 2024, a case uh, was identified where uh, a grouping used uh, AI in the attack, and experts experts uh, think that a special script was used, written by an AI model. Uh, comments uh, were 
of very high quality. So people from writing malware uh, don't usually do that. Uh, one can't be 100% sure uh, that uh, this indeed was a case of using AI, uh, but uh, I think it's quite uh, it's quite far gro it's grounded in uh, sound uh, considerations. Also, there are groupings uh, that try they try to use AI. And this is a very hot topic. I talk about vulnerability exploitation. Yeah. I would like to mention that, of course, AI uh, is being used uh, in pen testing. Uh, there are tools for pen testing, for instance, the deep exploit uh, is one of them. Uh, what is the most interesting about this? Of course, pen testing can be done by white hackers. Something like a pen test can be done uh, by uh, wrongdoers. And there's uh, nothing standing in the way for wrongdoers to use this kind of tool. Uh, the solution collects information itself as a support camera. You don't even need uh, to enrich it with data. Uh, it, is, it can even learn itself, it's self-learning, uh, and uh, having exploited uh, vulnerabilities going further, uh, providing you with a detailed report of what happened and what can be done about that. And again, coming back to dark web, uh, these services uh, are already uh, quite widespread, they're being sold uh, for uh, wrongdoers, uh, for uh, you know, beginning wrongdoers. Uh, helping uh, our counterparts across uh, the uh, line to attack organizations. So we've encountered quite an exciting piece of research uh, that shows how AI tools uh, can be used to exploit vulnerabilities. So we took GPT-4, uh, we took open chat and exploited uh, some of the vulnerabilities in some closed perimeter. And GPT уже как-то особых проблем нет. То есть, в принципе, некоторые инъекции, как другие, оно the, at the moment, uh, but it will surely happen. Now, a few words about deepfakes. Deepfakes are a threat not only uh, for individuals, but also for organizations. Uh, so based on our data, we analyzed uh, what deepfake uh, is, used, is being used for, mostly it's for fraudulent advertising, and of course deepfakes are used to manipulate uh, public opinion, uh, to pursue some political goals or some other designs, uh, especially it's noticed when some military operation started. This uh, uh, difficult uh, geopolitical situation uh, played its role. And in all, also, you know, uh, uh, pre election uh, machinations, deepfakes uh, have been used, uh, carrying a threat to some organization. But there, were, uh, there have been cases uh, when uh, deepfake uh, was uh, created on behalf uh, of uh, the CEO, uh, asking uh, the employees to do something, for instance, to withdraw some money. And again, uh, you know, looking of the dark web, uh, what uh, is being done, where and how, uh, we see that uh, there are quite a lot of uh, services related deepfakes uh, off of this market. And if uh, the wrongdoer uh, can't do it themselves, uh, they can uh, do it with the help of other people by paying them a certain amount of money. Uh, so, what else? I think it's important to note here that the application of artificial intelligence is quite diverse and they constantly add new prospects. For example, you can use artificial intelligence and bypass capture, normal capture, because AI uses OCR technologies and it seems like there are no real problems here. We also mentioned different brute forces when trying to hack passwords looking for vulnerabilities, and obviously it might not be very popular or very widespread thing, but it still exists, and especially in 
the dark net too. Within our activity, we create many different researches, and if you care, you can check them in our pages. One of them is in Russian, another in English, and we also, together with our colleagues, we consider applications of AI. If you are interested in this topic, please check what kind of reports and analytics we provide. We also have social media media, we use them, Hubber, Telegram, VK, including our colleagues who we have in our company. Sometimes there are very interesting points about AI applications, so we will be happy if you come and join us. And I can hear it from the stage. That it, it seems funny that there is some kind of fun going on there. We, we do have a little bit of fun here. Unfortunately, it's not the hatters who are there, because I know all the songs by hatters, and probably they don't really know many things about AI, so it's kind of joke. This is all I wanted to say, dear colleagues. Once again, thank you for your attention, thank you for coming to this final presentation on Saturday, and I welcome you to continue our great festival at the stage. I will be here the whole Sunday, so if you want to talk to me, obviously I am free to discussions. Thank you.